When water is released from dams, houses, offices, hospitals, transportation roads and bridges are destroyed. People even become homeless. Recently, the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency advised communities along River Niger in Kwara, Niger and Kogi states to relocate. This is as a result of water released from Kanji and Jeba dams. The dams are releasing water per minute that could lead to the overflow of River Niger. The agency also says there is the likelihood that Adamawa, Onui, Nasawa and Ananda states would experience flooding following the release of water from Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. What are the implications and how can we prevent a recurrence? These are some of the questions my guest Clement Nzi, Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, will be answering. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on Insights. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here again. Could you shed more light on the statement uh, released by your agency regarding the latest release from the dams? Yes, there are communities that are contiguous to River Niger or that are within the banks of River Niger. If you notice all over the country there have been incessant heavy amount of rainfall leading to high saturation of the soil. Now, the dams are overwhelmed. By that I mean, it gets a certain threshold that to safeguard the life of the dam, the best thing you do is to commence a gradual release of water. And that's what both Kainji and Jeba Dam dams have commenced to do. It, that is, the implication is this. That the communities downstream the dams and very close to the banks of rivers of river niger are going to experience flooding we have been talking about this over over the months of the likelihood of release of water from the dams and instantly it has come to be so we advise communities and people that are doing business by the dams of River Niger to relocate. You can do that and there are some modes when the river must have receded the flood level. You can go back to your business, but to save your life, we advise that these communities should relocate. The state governments that have been listed, the Niger, Quara, and so on and so forth, they know themselves. I mean, they, they know the communities that are involved, even from our prediction earlier prediction in, in the year. So the best to be done now is to relocate to the higher grounds. So relocation is a key thing now. Yeah. Now, the release from Lacto Dam seems to be a causing more harm. How do we cut this practice? Because the implications are quite grave. And we understand that um, uh, the Lagdo management do have a practice. That's been quite pathetic. You know, for quite some months I have been in contact with authorities in Cameroon. People that are in charge of the day-to-day -day run of the dams, of the Lagdo dam. Pleading with them to respect the letters of the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the two countries. I recall that in 2006, 2016, President Paul Bia was in Nigeria to meet with his Nigerian counterpart, His Excellency, Muhammad Buhar, GCFR. They signed an MOU that in the event Cameroon must release water from the Dam, Nigeria should be notified ahead of time so as to evacuate their citizens by the banks of the mm -hmm. Now, about three weeks ago, I called and send text message. They are sure that whenever they are going to do release of water, they will notify Nigeria. Now, out of, of, of instinct, on the 14th of this September, I sent another message as a follow up. Then I get a response that we commenced release of water yesterday, that being 13th, by 8 50 a.m. at the rate of 615 cubic meters per second. Yeah. So, from time to time, they don't notify Nigeria. As we speak, so many communities 
in Adamawa, Taraba, and Benue have been flooded. There's an immigration facility, immigration office at uh, Uruboki in Adamawa. That place has been taken over by flood. Go to Luma, go to Yola, and several other cities or communities within Taraba, Adamawa, and coming on to Benue. So they are fond of releasing water without informing Nigeria, breaching the content of the MOE signed by the two nations. Now, well, before we talk about measures to be taken to curb the impact of these uh, releases, what would the Nigerian government be doing regarding the action of the Cameroonian uh, LATCO uh, management? You see, in 2019, I was on another assignment outside Nigeria when I got a report from my officers in Yola that the dam, the river, River Nile, Benue was overflowing. So many communities have been submerged. That was in October 2019. I called. They denied ever releasing water. Until much later, November 1, they told me that uh, we opened our dam on October 10th and closed it October 31st, having three weeks of non-stop of release of water. Mm. Now, we took, uh, took it up. The other Minister of Water Resources in the Summer Adam wrote a letter to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Nigeria with necessary documents related to getting to the MOU signed and requested that he takes it up with his Cameroonian counterparts for breaching the understanding between the two nations. That one is being addressed. Why do you release water? Why do you breach the content of the MOU signed by the two nations? So does that one have been enforced? And we try to work it out and see why such a thing should be done. Affected persons have been directed to leave their houses. What do we have plans for these persons? Lema is already at work. They have the offices within those areas, within the state. And also working in tandem with the state emergency management agencies to see to what they what should be done to relocate affected people. Even though them may not want to do that to be relocated. But Lema mm -hmm. is doing his best on in that regard. Oh, of course, the rains would always come uh, uh, come every year. But is there a permanent solution to this issue? Because people lose their lives every day to flooding. Their property, some lose their jobs, you know, their livelihood. Could there be a permanent solution to it? You see, it's a natural phenomenon. Yes, we talk about climate change and so on and so forth, that we cannot stop flooding. But we can reduce this negative impact on us mm -hmm. by taking necessary measures. If we know that there are a certain period of the year that this flood will occur, certain measures need to be taken ahead of time. There are structures that need to be constructed by governments. I keep talking about it. the sub-national, we have the state government. The measure that the state government should have taken have been, been given advices ahead of time to build some structures, barriers in some locations in their states that will release um, you know, the flood that normally occurs. We talk about cleaning up your drainages, building regions where they don't exist at all, and then having the taking the bull by the horn by removing structures that individuals have built within the flood plains. But we keep advocating the issue of uh, taking the people away from those areas and even individuals on their own to take their own responsibility for themselves to move away from the flood prone areas before the flood comes. So it is both government and the individuals that have to take responsibilities, not just government, but individuals have their own part to play. And also, you can't just be waiting for federal government to come and do it in your own state. Let the states also take some steps to ensure that they secure the lives of their citizens, relocate them, 
build necessary structures that will prevent the flooding. Remove structures that are obstructing the flow of flood yes, once it comes. It is an annual event, so to say that we should be able to have adapted or gotten some measures on ground to help us reduce the impact. Even though we cannot stop it entirely. The government has done some work by way of consulting what we call flood hostess through the presidential committee on flood relief and rehabilitation. We have it in some critical locations in the in this in different states in Nigeria. Where people that are in flood prone areas are relocated at such critical period of the year. They go there, they have their life, normal life there. Because facilities are already provided. You have clinic, you have water, you have you know, like a hostel in the secondary school. Kitchen where you can cook. Stay there for some months, maybe two months or three, depending on the severity. After that you you go back to your normal life or where you be, where you live. But to stop flooding permanently, we you know what is happening globally. Although this is this is the first, and I said the worst case scenario, what happened in Karachi in yes. Pakistan, where thousands of people lost their lives. Right, sure. Clement Nze, Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Sir, we want to thank you so much for sharing tips with us on this segment. Thank you so much. My pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it on this episode of the program. Do join us same time next week for more on Insights. My name is Nam Diodipo. And I'm Elizabeth Amari. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>